Coming up, an elderly dog's life hangs in the balance after a fall down the stairs. You ask her to get up because I need to see whether she's going to get up. Come on, baby. Jaw-dropping living conditions for dogs in South Wales. This is disgusting. Yeah, oh, well, yeah. Not, yeah. Well, you can see that. And a life-or-death situation for a dog trapped on one of the hottest days of the year. The conditions are absolutely disgusting. It's living in its own faeces. Time is really of the essence here. Caring for a dog is a huge commitment, and as the number of dogs increases, so too does the amount of work. Throw in a litter of puppies and the constant feeding and cleaning up that goes with them, and things can quickly spiral out of control. In South Wales, Inspector Keith Hogburn is following up on a case where he believes that a number of dogs are living in appalling conditions. The gentleman living there refuses to answer the door to us or acknowledge our cards or get back to us in any way. Living in poor conditions, which is evident from the state of the garden. I've just got a, a hunch that things, things aren't great there and, uh, you know, we need to help. We need to help those animals. Today, Keith is being joined by Inspector Gemma Cooper, who has visited the property before. Not looking any better, is it, Jim? and they can instantly see that this is a problem that's only going to get worse. A lot of this faeces, although some of it's fresh, a lot of it is old, it's just not being cleared up. You can see from the general state of the garden, there's so many hazards there that the dogs could injure themselves on. I think it's vital we, we see the dogs and see what we can do to help them. Hello, sir, it's the RSPCA. Keen to get to the bottom of the problem, they waste no time getting inside. Yeah. Hiya, buddy, from the RSPCA. Uh, We're trying to get hold of you for a while. Can we see the dogs? Yeah. Yeah, can we come in? Yeah, yeah. As soon as the front door is opened, it becomes clear that the back garden is just the tip of the iceberg, because inside, there's feces everywhere. This is disgusting. Yeah, oh, well, no, yeah. No, no, no. yeah you can see well, that. You shouldn't be living like this. No, no. OK? No. You can see that, can't you? Yeah. Right. I'm going to have to caution you already about well, the state no, yeah, of the place, not, right? Yeah, well. The state of the property is the responsibility of the owners. But as Keith and Gemma make their way through the house, they soon meet the real culprits. How old are the pups now? Ten weeks. Ten weeks. Six Rottweiler and Irish Terrier puppies. I'll be straight up with you, sir. Yeah. This is shocking. The owners are claiming that things have got out of control since the puppy's arrival. And Keith has a solution. I take the puppies off you. Carry on, no problem. Yeah, you're signing yeah. them over to us. Green. As the puppies are brought out, it's hard to believe that they've been growing up in such a filthy environment. There are six of them in the address. There were 11, believe it or not. The owner sold five of them, couldn't get rid of or sell the other six, so um, he signed them over to the RSPCA so we can rehome them. They are absolutely gorgeous. We don't have any trouble getting rid of puppies at all, so uh, let's get them in with their brothers and sisters. I think things have got on top of this couple. They've had an unexpected litter of pups, and the pups are trashing the house, basically, pooing everywhere and, of course, walking through it, and the excrement is going everywhere. With the puppies removed... <coughs> Keith turns his attention to the two adult dogs in the back garden, which is dirty, hazardous and unacceptable. I want to take the other two dogs. If you get this cleaned up... Yeah. I've got no problem with having your dogs back, but at the moment they can't stay in conditions like this. Yeah. I'm giving you the chance to put I... things right, yeah. um, you know, but I'm not leaving those dogs here living in filth. <sighs> the conditions in there are, well, just disgusting, really. Far from ideal. And the adult dogs, they're really friendly. The bitch is a little lean, where she's obviously feeding her pups. They've both been cautioned. Um, house needs a damn good clean out. We're not prepared to leave the adult dogs at the property, but at the same time, he doesn't want to sign the dogs over to the RSPCA. So I think we're going to issue a warning notice, give him a, a week to get it spick and span and clean, and then I've got no problem with the dogs coming back. <laughs> Hello. Come on, then. The puppy's parents, Bear the Rottweiler and Red the Irish Bull Terrier, will spend the next week in kennels while their owners try and get the living conditions up to standard. I think, in this case, they need a bit of help. And fingers crossed, this time next week when we come back, it'll be fine. And if it isn't, we'll take it further. With a week to turn things around, the owners have a massive task ahead. 
find out later whether they can get their dogs back. Just under 10% of the RSPCA's calls are classified as emergencies requiring immediate action. And in Birmingham, Inspector Scott Vaines is responding to such a call. The report is about a dog that's thought to have been left on a balcony in a block of flats. The call's come through as an emergency because it's apparently a glass balcony and the weather today is 28 degrees in Birmingham. The dog's got no water and appears to be distressed. It could prove fatal for a dog in those circumstances. As Scott arrives, he discovers that the balcony is actually an enclosed ground floor extension. And on such a hot day, what he finds inside is unbelievable. I dread to think what temperature it is in that room. You know, there's, there's full sunlight here today, and although it's slightly shaded here, it's still going to be heating up inside. The conditions are absolutely disgusting. You can see that the feces is smeared all up the wall. This dog needs to be removed from these conditions. It's not acceptable at all. Fortunately, there is a bowl of water. But unlike humans who reduce their temperature by sweating, the only way a dog can cool itself down is by panting, and in very hot conditions, some water just isn't enough. And a situation like this can become life-threatening in as little as 15 minutes. West Midlands Police, this is RSPCA Inspector Scott Vaines. Are you receiving, over? RSPCA officer, go again. We've got a dog here that's been locked in a balcony for an undetermined amount of time. Given the heat, the conditions are absolutely appalling inside, and I'm quite eager to get the dog out of here as soon as if possible, please. Although the female German Shepherd seems to be OK at the moment, things could still take a dramatic turn for the worse. We can see it's active, it's alert, it's barking at us, which is a really good sign in that it hasn't sort of deteriorated and hasn't dehydrated to the point of collapse. However, these things can happen so quickly in this sort of temperature and in this sort of heat. There's no cloud um, at all today, and it, it could only be a matter of, you know, 10, 15 minutes before the dog could deteriorate further, so time is really of the essence here. Before the police arrive, the owner of the dog returns, and Scott wants answers as to why she's treating her pet so badly. Right, listen to me. Where have you been? I was just at work. The dog is okay. on the balcony when I'm... When did you last clean that up? Uh, yesterday. OK. But... Well, just so you know, police are on the way now to break yeah. in here, OK? Oh, no, because it's, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous, leaving a dog in there in this heat today. I think offences have been committed, OK? Yeah. So, should we go in and we'll have a chat inside, all right? Having agreed to let Scott inside, the owner tells him that the dog is just under a year old and called Lexi. Scott has stood the police down, but as the owner has put Lexi's life at risk and failed to provide the level of care that she needs, he's going to take a tough line with her. Just being in here now, I am absolutely sweating. Let's be honest, this is disgusting. That was clean this morning. I didn't come down in the last shower. These conditions haven't been like this since this morning, have they? After some stern words, the owner signs Lexi over, meaning that she's now free from a life-threatening situation. At this point in time, um, she's decided that the best option would be to sign the dog over to the RSPCA immediately. Lexi has been locked in the room for over nine hours and is lucky to be alive. Come on, then. Her behaviour also suggests that she's had very little interaction with humans. No, she's totally unsocialised, as you can see. She's not used to what, what's happening. With serious concerns for her health, Lexi needs to be examined by a vet as quickly as possible. The vet is air-conditioned, it will be nice and cool for her inside and she can at least relax there and be out of the heat that she's probably been suffering all day. Thankfully, vet Mark Barton gives Lexi a clean bill of health and confirms that she's had a very lucky escape. She appears reasonably bright and alert. Um, her temperature is a little bit high. Come on, beautiful. We get a huge amount of ignorance and it astounds me why people have, have animals and the situations they put them in through on a daily basis, but it's frightening. Would you be mindful to say that that sort of heat in there would be causing her to suffer? Yes, which would well. potentially kill her. So, yeah. yeah. Definitely the right decision. She couldn't have stayed in that environment. I wasn't happy to have left this dog in those conditions today. And now she'll be in a clean environment tonight with a clean bed, and that's the instant difference that we're able to make. The future for Lexi looks good. You know, she's young, she's active, you know, she's really friendly with us. It frustratingly improved the welfare tenfold for this animal. Still to come, a heartbreaking dilemma for the owners of an elderly dog. It's not an easy decision to make. 
to have to do what's best for the dog. And Gemma returns to the house in South Wales. You've done a great job. There's still a little bit oh, yeah, to go. Yeah. But will they have done enough to get their dogs back? In South Wales, Inspector Gemma Cooper is returning to what was one of the most shocking house calls she's ever made. The place was absolutely disgusting. I haven't seen an address recently so bad. It was just dog feces all over the ground floor, up the walls, over the washing machine. So we removed the six puppies and the two adult dogs and we gave them a warning notice to basically clean up, make it a livable environment for the dogs and then they can have the two adult dogs back. So we gave them until Monday today. The owners have already signed six puppies over to the RSPCA but want to keep the two adult dogs. Whether they're allowed to do that is dependent on them making their home a suitable environment to keep the dogs in. If they haven't then I'll be really gutted, really disappointed for them and the dogs really. When Gemma was last here, there was so much faeces in the back garden that the smell was overpowering. Do the sniff test first. <laughs> yeah, it's looking good. Wow, brilliant. Well, there's no poo anymore. It's clear. The smell's gone. We could almost have a barbecue in there now. Almost. It's an impressive transformation in the back garden but it was inside where their conditions were beyond belief. Uh, yeah. Good stuff, mate. <laughs> How long did that take? All day, Ashley. Yeah, I bet. Well, this is looking a lot cleaner. Yeah. Can I go out into yeah. that garden? Go is that right? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. It smells a lot nicer in here as well. <laughs> You've done a great job. You too. Consider what it was like. Absolutely, yeah. There's still a little bit oh, yeah, yeah. left to go. Oh, yeah, 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 I wouldn't say it's finished yet. Yeah. It's just basically yeah. the main majority of it was all gone. Yeah, no, yeah. it's the brilliant. Main majority what a transformation. Yeah. I've got no problems with returning yeah. the two adult dogs, yeah. Red and Bear. It's going to take us a couple of hours to go and get the dogs and yeah. bring them back. But before I actually give them back yeah. to you, I will need yeah, yeah, the fair. rest that's of it yeah, cleared fair. up. The owners have made huge improvements, but there's still a bit more cleaning up to do before Gemma can let them have their dogs back. Because I can't return them whilst there's still poo and, and hazards yeah. around. Having their dogs removed by the RSPCA has actually come as a relief to the owner. Basically, we're going over our heads with the puppies. Now the puppies are gone, I've had a chance to basically get on top of everything, take it back to what it was originally like. Well, easy, peaceful life now. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Hey, job done. Uh, see you in a bit, no matter. In a couple of hours. Hey, no problem. Thank you very much. No worries. What a transformation. It's incredible what what someone can do in, in a week when they, you know, faced with losing their animals. Um, it really gives them the motivation to provide the environment that the animals deserve. Find out later what the dogs make of their new look home. Rather than being just a pet, most dogs are considered part of the family. And the special bond that's formed between a dog and its owners is what makes having one such a rewarding experience. But that strong bond can also make letting them go one of the hardest things to do. In Birmingham, Hershey Bowl is visiting an elderly old dog that fell down the stairs two weeks ago. Can she stand up? Sometimes. Come on, darling. Do you think she might have hurt herself when she fell? She's feeling herself, isn't she? The average life expectancy of a dog is 13 years, so at 15, Val has already reached a ripe old age, and her future made back on her feet. You ask her to get up, because I need to oh, see whether she's going to get up or not. Oh. Come on, baby. Bro. Stop ignoring me. Because of her condition, I'm going to take her to... And it looks as though her fall down the stairs may be a sign that she's no longer able to cope. What I don't want to do is force it to get up or move it too much because I don't want to do any more damage. But it's not looking good because it's such an old dog. You know, there's not, there's not a lot that the vet's going to be able to do with that, I don't think. Um, so I don't know, if, I don't think this is going to be a very happy ending. But as Hershey returns from moving the van closer to the house, She's surprised to see Val up and walking. 
Once she's up, though, she's moving reasonably well. Yeah. But it's that left leg, isn't it? She doesn't want to put it down all the way. Although she is on her feet, Val's owners carried her into the garden, keen to show Hershey that she can walk. But it quickly becomes clear that Val's very unsteady. What you really don't want to do, guys, is um, is let the dog go on to a point where, yeah. you know, it really is too, too, you know, too long. For Hershey, this case is very close to home because she was recently faced with the same dilemma herself. Having had my own dog put to sleep about six weeks ago, and he was nearly 13, so in fact he would have been 13 on Sunday. You know, I had him a long time, so I do understand completely how you feel. You know, it's not an easy decision to make. And, and that's a very difficult thing, you know, to have to do what's best for the dog. As she's carried to the van, it's clear that Val's quality of life is suffering. <laughs> it's an owner's responsibility to always do what is best for their dog, even if that means making the toughest decision of all. All right, Swoopy. They know that it's coming close to the time that they have to make a decision, and I think they know that that time is probably now. What's really hard is to keep a dog going and going and going, and then it's in a really bad state. You don't want to remember your dog like that. Hershey takes Val to be examined by local vet Mark Barton. Come on, sweetheart. Come on, then. Come on, now. Basically, she's an elderly lady. She's struggling to, to make any attempts to stand up. It can be from any number of reasons. Give her some medication and some analgesia. If she doesn't respond to that medication over 24, 48 hours, then the chances are, sadly, she may not respond, and in which case we may have to make the decision to, to let her go. Because of the special relationship that can develop between an owner and their dog, this is the scenario that every owner dreads. It's just a case of waiting now. I do sympathise with them. I think, for me, it, it kind of um, it's a bit closer to home because only a few weeks ago, I had to have my own dog, Kipper, put to sleep. You know, that was a very difficult decision, and some of the things were quite similar with them, but I also wouldn't allow my dog to, to get to a stage where it wasn't happy, so... In South Wales, the couple who were keeping dogs in squalid and dirty conditions have dramatically cleaned up their act. Inspector Gemma Cooper is picking up Bear the Rottweiler and Red the Irish Bull Terrier, ready to return them to their owners. Are you going back to Mummy and Daddy? Hey? This is the harness that the dogs came with. Before she can take them, she first needs to get to grips with their rather unusual leather harnesses. I'm better at the Rubik's Cube. After a bit of a struggle, and a big wet kiss. He's a loving boy. Red and Bear are ready to go home, and they're taking Gemma with them. They quite clearly love the dogs and they want to keep them, so why not give them the opportunity to put things right? And it looks like they have done so, which is which is great for all, all around, really. Back at the house, Gemma makes one last inspection. Wow, impressive. <laughs> I struggled to put their harnesses on. <laughs> That's why we were so late. <laughs> All right. <laughs> a tough ultimatum from the RSPCA... All right, I'll just pop to the van and go and get them. Yeah. ..has given these owners the drive they needed to change for the better, and they can now be reunited with Red and Bear, who have been sorely missed. Hello, hello, babies. Oh, I bloody missed you too. Big kiss, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> oh, <I'm laughs> okay. Okay, good boy. I'm happy now. I'm absolutely happy. No, I bloody missed him. Did, did, yes. I'm going for a long run. These owners have taken their chance and got their dogs back, but that doesn't mean that Gemma won't be keeping a close eye on things. But if I do get another call, no problem. Yeah. Like I said, do if you do it, I'll only I have no up. option. Yeah, I'll only right. hands up. You, um, you've yeah. only had one chance, that's yeah. it. Pick up the poo daily. Yeah. <laughs> Go and pick it up. I have to let look in now. Results.
happy ending all around, not just for the animals, but for the people as well. Um, I've certainly noticed a difference in their attitude and their motivation uh, since 10 days ago, so really, really good result. After a series of tests, unfortunately, nothing could be done to help 15-year-old Val, and so the kindest course of action was to put her to sleep. And Lexi, the German Shepherd, rescued from the flats in Birmingham, was taken to boarding kennels and will hopefully be ready to be rehomed soon. Next time... God, absolutely stinks. Dogs are discovered barricaded in vile living conditions. They're that scared and timid, they kept running back into that shed. And a frightened dog, left on its own for days, protects her puppies. I need to get in there. Hello. Oh, I love me. Over 100,000 dogs and puppies are abandoned every year in the UK. And we want to try and find loving new homes for as many of them as possible. If you think you could give these amazing animals somewhere to call home, please go to our dedicated website, channel5.com forward slash dog rescuers, where you'll find all the information you'll need. Thank you.